Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss one of the very important topic for NEET exam that is human ear and we are going to discuss the internal structure of human ear. Human ear basically consists of three major parts that is outer ear, middle ear and the inner ear. What are the various components of human ear that is included in outer ear? So we can say it is pinna, second is auditory canal, third we have eardrum. Eardrum is also known as tympanic membrane. The components of middle ear is ear ossicles. Now when we talk about ear ossicles, these are the smallest bone of our body. It includes malleus, incus and stapes. Where the stapes among all the three is the smallest one. Then there is oval window, round window and we have inner eustachian tube. So basically these are the components of middle ear. What are the components of the inner ear? The inner ear includes first of all semicircular canal. Second it also includes cochlea. Third it includes utriculus, saculus and it has auditory nerve. All these are the parts of human ear. When we talk about ear now, this outermost part is called as auricle or even it is called as pinna. What is the role of the pinna? So we can say the most important function is collection of sound. Whatever sound enters in the ear, it enters through the auricle or the pinna. The moment we go inside the auricle, what we can see is the external auditory meters. It forms a cone shape like structure basically. And what we have this part here is auditory canal. Auditory canal, what role it plays? It helps in the transfer of the sound from the auricle till the eardrum. So basically whatever sound is taken by the pinna, it is transferred to the eardrum via the auditory canal. This is the ceremonious gland which produces wax and wax helps in trapping the dirt that is present in the air. Now when we go inner to it, we have the tympanic membrane. This is called as eardrum or even it is called as tympanic membrane. So whenever sound hits the tympanic membrane, it vibrates and vibration is going to generate the impulse. What is the role? We can say the external auditory meters, it leads the sound to the eardrum or the tympanic membrane which vibrates and the intensity of vibration depends upon the decibel of the sound. Then there is auditory tube which is also known as eustachian tube and the function of the eustachian tube you know what is to equalize the air pressure in both the ears so logically it connects both the part middle pharynx you can say and if you close your nose basically and try to blow the air out since the nose is closed the ear pressure of the both the ears becomes equal so it helps in equalizing the ear pressure that is very important part these are the three ear ossicles that we need to study and these ear ossicles are nothing but malleus incus and stapes when we talk about malleus malleus is also known as hammer when we talk about incus incus is also known as anvil and the stapes is also known as stirrup so basically we need to understand stapes is the smallest bone of our human body very important then remember the order of this ear ossicle it is miss then it leads to the semicircular canal and here semicircular canal takes two and a half turn so basically it's not three complete turn it is two and a half and then there is the most important part that is called as oval window the point of connection this what we can see is the cochlea we need to study this is auditory nerve we need to study semicircular canal and cochlea in detail so we cannot study in this diagram because the diagram is very small so what we are going to do you know we are just going to zoom and see inside what is present let's now zoom in the inner part so here what we can see we can see the three ear ossicles this green one i can call it as a malleus that is acting like a hammer the inner one is called as incus which is acting like an anvil and this part is basically called as stapes which is also known as stirrup and stirrup is the smallest bone in our body now this red portion that you can see is the eardrum 
there is a point of connection that is called as oval window so whenever we talk about oval window remember students oval window is a place where the stirrup or the stapes and the inner ear meet or connect that is called as oval window then we have one more this red one is called as the round window so we can say round window is nothing but it is the point of attachment for the middle ear and the inner ear so i can say the window which connects the middle ear and the inner ear it is called as round window so this is the important part now taking you to the next part where we are going to study the semi circular canal and here semi circular canal will be studied in detail now this is the semi circular canal so here we are talking about perception of sound when the sound travels first it hits the ear drum that is nothing but the tympanic membrane after that it is going to travel through the three ear ossicles that is malleus incus and stapes after traveling through the ear ossicles it goes somewhere in the semicircular canal now this part is called as the ampulla if somebody ask you what is ampulla you can say the basolan base of semicircular canal is called as ampulla and this is the actual semicircular canal which was having 2 and a half turn so whenever it comes to ampulla just remember it is solen base of the semicircular canal and what is the role of this ampulla because ampulla is going to play a very important role in ear so we say that the ampulla consists of sensory cells and these sensory cells are responsible for dynamic balance when the body is in motion it means when you are moving from one place to the another and still if you are able to perceive sound it is just because of the ampulla the fold of the semicircular canal is called as crista ampullaris again one of the important part the base of the crista ampullaris here we can call it as utriculus and above the cochlea the region that is present above the cochlea it is called as saculus utriculus and saculus together together they are called as otoliths organ so it becomes one of the most important part so what is otoliths organ and what is the role of otoliths organ so we need to understand here students that this otoliths organ is responsible for again it is responsible for the balance so logically otoliths organ first you need to understand it joins the cochlea and the semicircular canal and at the same time it is responsible for static balance when the body is at rest or when the body is stationary it means there is no movement and still if somebody calls you you are able to hear that sound it is all because of the otoliths organ so remember ampulla is for dynamic balance when the body is in motion and otoliths organ at rest this is cochlea and we need to study cochlea in detail so i have just taken out one cochlea and we are going to see its inner cavity so this is the cochlea the fold inside when we see we can see three different section so this is one of the section which is red i make it red in color this is the second section which is green in color and the smaller one in the center basically blue in color so the upper one is known as what it is called as scala vestibuli and even it is also known as vestibular canal whereas the middle layer basically is called as median canal and the inner one is called as tympanal canal now what we need to do is we need to study this section in detail so basically now here we are going to talk about the inner cavity of this cochlea and it will be further zoomed to understand what is present so the upper one we call it as vestibular canal which is also known as scala vestibuli the middle one is median canal also called as scala media and the inner one the lower one you can say it's a tympanal canal also called as scala tympani here what we have is the organ of corti the most important part of the ear that is responsible for perceiving sound so basically we can say that the organ of corti consists of sensory hair cell all the hair cells are present on a special membrane called as basilar membrane and there is a connection to the auditory nerve and this auditory nerve plays very important role in transferring the sound to the temporal lobe of the brain now let student understand the cross section of the cochlea whenever i talk about cross section now this is the small three it is having the outermost covering that is called as bony labyrinth now whenever we talk about bony labyrinth what exactly it means so we can say it is nothing but the outer series of channels in which 
देर इज मेम्ब्रेनस लैब्रिंथ सो बोनी लैब्रिंथ इज गोइंग टू सराउंड द मेम्ब्रेनस लैब्रिंथ दैट इज वॉट इज बोनी लैब्रिंथ एंड वी कैन से इन टू दैट देर इज मेम्ब्रेनस लैब्रिंथ सो सेकेंड पार्ट वॉट वी हैव हियर वी कैन से दिस इज मेम्ब्रेनस लैब्रिंथ नाउ वेन वी टॉक अबाउट दीज थ्री पार्ट्स इन डिटेल वी ऑल नो दैट दिस मेम्ब्रेनस लैब्रिंथ इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ सर्टन पार्ट्स सो फर्स्ट वी कैन से दैट द मेम्ब्रेनस लैब्रिंथ इज कंटिन्यूस एंड इट हैज अ क्लोज कैविटी फिल्ड विथ एंडो लिम्फ रिमेंबर मेम्ब्रेनस लैब्रिंथ इज विथ एंडो लिम्फ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट फॉर यूनिट एग्जाम the membranous labyrinth basically includes what it includes the coiled cochlea it includes the resner's membrane and it also includes the basilar membrane all these three parts together basically makes up the membranous labyrinth which is present inside the bony labyrinth now this layer what we can see here is called as scala vestibuli or even it is also known as vestibular canal when we talk about the next part that is scala media so scala media becomes the middle part here is the lower most part this is called as scala tympani the lower one so whenever we talk about scala tympani we need to understand it is the lower part and where it terminates it terminates at the round window of the ear very important part and it opens in the middle ear next is the most important part of the cochlear section that is called as scala media and this scala media is also known as median canal and scala media is nothing but the space within the cochlea they this scala media scala vestibular scala tympani they are all filled with certain fluids and lower to that we have organ of call time these are specialized cell that is present in this scala media this is located on the basilar membrane so all the organ of cordae cells are present on the basilar membrane which consist of hair cells hair cells are nothing but these are columnar ciliated cells and they are responsible for auditory receptors and this is the basilar membrane and basilar membrane is very important because on this only the organ of cordae cells are present the ciliated cells basically columnar cells these are all hair like structure and these hair cells are very important because when they bend and they touch the tectorial membrane which is present above the hair cell then only the sound can be perceived you know it's like a connection so this tectorial membrane is very important because the hair cells they will bend and they will touch the tectorial membrane so that sound can be easily perceived so whenever we talk about this we need to understand on the basilar membrane there are hair cells which are called as organ of corti and above that there is a tectorial membrane the hair cell what they do basically they bend and they touch the tectorial membrane then there is a perilymph it is present in the scala vestibuli and scala tympani and in the scala media there is endolymph present remember the fluid students this is all about the cross section of cochlea hope you would have understood some part in the human ear this is neil sir saying goodbye to you don't forget to give a like to the channel and if you are new do subscribe thank you very much